if I put in perspective, if that's this much phosphor, that much is available generally. That's research shows. How we can make that more available? By adding more organic matter and understanding what we put there. If you're going to add in more gypsum, what you're going to do, you're adding more calcium, which is going to tie your phosphor. So these are some of the things, hopefully I'll talk about that. I already mentioned calcium ties up your phosphor, making iron available to pollen. Add phosphor in the fall, especially those people for lawn and garden and others. Phosphor moves about a quarter of an inch in a season. So you can, if during the season you're applying, especially you're applying on the sole surface, it's not going to move that much. You're not going to get result as much that year. I highly recommend if you're in lawn and garden situation or you're in urban horticulture, you apply phosphor in the fall. Or if you have a garden, you can incorporate that, mean till it in so it's there. All the freezing, tying, everything in the winter will help that to be more available. Add zinc and iron. Soils high in calcium, I already said. Most of the area you know, these are the characteristics of iron deficiencies and zinc deficiencies. Midriffs get dark green, generally you see that. But again, when we have a high calcium, if you go add granular zinc and iron, they're not chelated, they're not gonna work. Especially for trees and shrubs, I highly recommend you deep root feed them. For farmers, what I do, actually we water run in a liquid form or when they are incorporating, we incorporate them so they're available to their roots, okay? Then I already mentioned that Organic matter and elemental sulfur. Eleme or I told you, when you have a high calcium, this is another missing link, you need to apply elemental sulfur. Elemental sulfur, again, if there is no organic matter, it's not going to work. I'll show you. Because in order for sulfur to be activated, you need a tyrobacillus bacteria. You don't need to know that, but that's the one activates sulfur, makes a sulfate, and sulfate grabs your calcium, makes a gypsum. So, organic matter in elemental sulfur turns sulfur into sulfate, and sulfate grabs calcium and makes natural gypsum. So, in this stuff, adding natural gypsum, adding gypsum, you can make a gypsum. And there are many farmers we worked at, and we documented most of these. This is what happens. My intention is not to give you a chemistry. Elemental sulfur, again, you need to have organic matter, especially now we have a good quality humic. They have done lots of research. If those of you interested, I can give you some companies that have done lots of research. Again, you apply that enhance that to sulfate. Sulfate with calcium makes gypsum. And since we have calcareous soil with high pH, I mentioned to you most of the nutrients are available at the pH of six and a half, seven and a half. You know, pH is logarithmic. pH of 0.1 in comparing pH of 0.2 is 10 times stronger. Means you cannot drastically bring pH down, but what you, what you can say that, you actually make the buffer the soil by adding organic matter or elemental sulfur. So when you make very diluted sulfuric acid, what it does, it somehow helps buffer that makes most, some of the nutrients available. It doesn't change the pH drastically, but helps some of the nutrient more available. Okay? This is some research years ago I did in Owyhee County. Sulfur required to lower the pH. You don't need to really know. Remember, the main thing is the higher the pH, the more sulfur you need. You know, light soil, sandy soil, heavy soil need more. In lawn and garden situation, even sometimes I say per thousand square feet, you can use 30, 40 pounds per thousand square feet. In farmers, it's not cost effective. I generally tell them use 200 to 300 pounds per acre. Okay, so, but of course, as you know, you need to have organic matter for that to work. Okay, 
the potassium. You think when we add the potassium? Potassium ties up with the clay mineral. In a farm we see, even in farm situation, all the farmers I talk, I say, if you can water on potassium or you split your potassium because clay mineral, you know, soil particles made of sand, silt, clay, and their particle size are 0 0.002 millimeter. They tie the potassium. So if you put potassium gradually during the season, doesn't matter in your lawn, garden, whatever, that's much more effective. Again, potassium, you know, when you put, most of the time, the people in June, July, plants are transpiring a lot. You have transpiration is a lot. You put in June, July, I'm talking about urban horticulture. I don't know how many people are in farming, how many people are in urban horticulture. But it is going to help a lot if you put in June, July, you know how you jog and run, what you do. They say get some potassium drink. Well, the same thing plants need it. Potassium is a water pipeline. It balances the osmosis, we call matric potential in the, in the plant. So when you have that, that's the best thing. These are some simple missing link, really, in understanding soil what needs to be done. But again, one thing you can solve the things are Organic matter, organic matter. I'll repeat that over and over. Then we go on the soil health. Actually, Alan talked today. Uh, in 1971 to 73, I was involved in a big desertification pro pro actually project in Iran. They called Desert of Turan, 400,000 hectares. I worked with U.S. scientists. We were doing desertification. Then in 76, they gave me a scholarship. I came <clears throat> to USA. But anyhow, the same thing Alan was talking after I left, our project got award, Plant Ecology Award in Germany in 1977. So that was, <laughs> so anyhow, that was the part of the things that happened there, this desertification thing, sustainability of sowing, going a holistic understanding. Those elders knew how to take care of that soil. The nomads you heard, when they go to soil health, they used to know, they used to walk all the time, all these grazing animals from the place to place. We all the time had excellent plant climax. And I was, uh, my family were ranchers, and uh, we had 12,000 hectares of, uh, 12, 12, 1,200 actually, hectares of the cropland and 30,000 acres of the rangeland. And we knew all the time they did that, and we had a very good luck with plant climax, plant density, and plant health, and soil health. So, then I'm going to relate that, how important it is. I was in Germany, one of the scientists who worked his life in soil organic matter, he says it's well known large portion, 50 to 100 percent of organic matter is attached, bound to mineral matrix. What do you mean? It attacks to sand, silt, clay, mostly to clay. Okay? And it puts that perspective, again, if I show you a pond of soil that I did, again, 45 percent is mineral matter, the rest are air and water, and this small amount of organic matter dominates really soil health that we forgot. I remember my major professor in Iran about 40 something years ago talking, I said, one thing is missing American farm bill is, they're not talking as much about soil organic matter. I remember we were arguing, he told me I'm out of my mind, but I think maybe I was right. So anyhow, reality check. I ask you a question. What percent of harvested crop, fruits, vegetables, everything is carbon, hydrogen, oxygen? Anybody has any idea? Yeah. 96%. 96%. I think that the, the deal is, I was actually at the plant protection seminar the other day, asked, nobody answered that. I mean, we were all university guys, nothing against us. But, but if I put that perspective, if you look at carbon, you know, oxygen, hydrogen, 96.6% is carbon, oxygen, hydrogen. Where they come from? Air. Air, air and water. That's why I tell farmer, we put fertilizer. I'm not against fertilizer, I'm a soil scientist. But fertilizer, fertilizer, fertilizer. We tie up all those things, mass up the things. If 90, the 
Israelis do this. Israelis are on this one. They watch this. Germans are now watching this. This is new perspective in crop management. So you can see there. Then again, put that in perspective. I showed you if I get a pond of the soil, sand, silt, clay, roots, and air. Anybody can tell me when the water, nutrient, and roots reside in the, plant, in, in the soil? In micropores or macropores? In micropores. They reside in micropores. Do you know minerals? Micropores, macropores. By adding organic matter, which a small amount of soil is, they have a small particle size. Humic substances, their particle size are 2200 nanometers. Soil particle size, clay particle size are 0 0.002 millimeter. If I put in perspective, if I get four ounces of your soil and spread, cover this area, four ounces of your soil. And if I get four ounces of the organic acid, or these are actual organic acids, their part particle size are 2200 nanometers. The same amount of I spread space-wise will cover probably three times more than this building. Half an inch, one centimeter is 10 million nanometer. I don't want to confuse you, but I'm just going to give you perspective. By adding organic matter, you, what you do, you flaculate, make that soil open. That small particles combined with clay tactoids, we call it, clay minerals, and make an aggregate. When they make aggregate, they make that micropores, that water, nutrient, and actually water, nutrient, and roots reside. I have a, a sugar beet grower. This is a nine years. I caught, well, I have lots of them. I caught his almost fertilizer in half. This is nine years. If you look at Sugar Beet Magazine, he is a number one grower. Everybody say hi. That's how we're using. I have lots of farmers like that. We have done lots of research. These are facts. But we get actually what they call uh, have inhibited by the sometimes false idea, you, the more we put, the more we get, sometimes that's not the truth. We are under hypnosis of some cultural conditioning that, oh, this is what we do. We tie those nitrogen. We put so much MPK, you know, all 50 states in America now, they have groundwater contamination. So these are simple things we can do. So again, put this missing links, again, remember, Roots, water, and nutrient reside in micropores. By adding organic matter, you create micropores. That's simple. Put that again in perspective. If these are roots, and this is your soil actually texture and all, you can that the hairy roots, when they go those micropores, actually I told you, one centimeter, 10 million nanometer. With this, these are small particles of the soil organic matter or the humic substances. When they combine, they make micropores. So roots, water, and nutrient reside in micropores. Oxygen reside in macropores. What does that mean? You make soil more aerobic, then you don't get as much disease. Pythium, rhizog, and wercelium, and all those kinds. Of, you're not going to get some of those because you condition that soil in a beneficial way. Are we clear, CA? Yeah? Uh, the organic matter, you said, uh, binds to the clay particles? Yeah. P clay particles, well, they actually binds clay, silt, sand. But first it does, they call first order of reaction, does with clay, after that with calcium. Yes. So is that good that it binds with clay? Excellent. Excellent, because it makes micropores. Yeah, makes micropores. We need, uh, what does aggregate mean? Aggregate mean, do you know some of the good soils? Actually, I have some here. I brought, I know somebody was going to ask. In North Idaho, plus, I got some good soils. They're called prismatic. If you look at, these are aggregate. Look at under microscope. Lots of porosities, healthy soil, lots of organic matter. Microbes have million dollar house. 
This is what it is. Yeah, it's excellent to do that. That's what the more organic matter you have, the you add in the soil, the better the soil health. I'm making compost and I always add, it's like bentonite clay to the compost. Uh huh. Uh, so that would give an opportunity. You bet. Not only that, you, you create an oculum. The soils have lots of, you know, few ounces of soil have millions of fungi, bacteria, protozoa. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, for me, farming is actually from here, and I'm just flying back to going to, to be a big conference, and we we're just going to talk about the same thing. Farming is transforming sunlight into the dollar. One is what? Photosynthesis. What does that mean? Capturing that carbon energy. Do you remember we said? Whatever you grow, you analyze final product, you have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. So we have capturing carbon energy. Then making it. Then after that, we move carbon energy. Transpiration. Moving the carbon energy. Okay? That time, that's why we need a little potassium. Not too much. We need a little potassium. It's a water pipeline, moves that. Why we add phosphor? Phosphor is, I mean, you heard of the, actually, the TPS, or phosphor is a forklift for moving carbon up. Phosphor is a forklift for moving the carbon. Okay. And then respiration. Respiration, what happened? The more the plants respire, the more organic matter you have. There is an enzyme in organic matter called porphyrins. They make this like photons change to energy, and they make respiration. The more respiration you have, you make more yield, dry matter. So that's the farming. But if we know how to balance it, that's the name of game. They will, we can get the best result out of farming. And hopefully now many farmers are coming back because of the, you know, everything is expensive. As I said, soils got salt affected, all those stuff. Okay? So farming is this. All we're talking about carbon. Everything is carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. We get that from air and water. Then I want to talk briefly about the pH. You know, pH is very important. Pitch of seven, less than seven is acid, more than seven is basic, as you know, neutral is seven. Best range for most of the plants that they like actually to remove and absorb and absorb the nutrient are pH of six and a half and seven. Okay? I just want to mention. Then here put in perspective, when you have a high calcium, look at our soils are A from seven point five almost eight point two, eight point the calcium, high calcium ties. All your phosphor ties, your zinc and iron. And again, in the other spectrum of the pH, do you know then zinc and iron are tied up, or our North Idaho, others that they have acidic soil, is still adding organic matter will help. You think in North Idaho we, they have too much for calcium? No, they need to add calcium to make that base saturation go up. So this is how. Working with soil is balance, 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 okay? So, then again, phosphor, I said, it is adenosine triphosphate. You don't need, that's the energy of the plants. That, the, how it happens, make carbon move up and down. It's a forklift. 